Uh, Coach, just, uh, just general impressions uh, from the other night at Cincinnati. Obviously, it was an excellent first half. Things kind of unraveled a bit in the second half. What did you see in that game that maybe maybe troubled you? Well, first, I think we did some good things. Uh, I thought some guys stepped up in the absence of a few of our players and uh, gave us some good contributions. I thought we had to be better defensively from the standpoint of getting back in transition. They're a really quick team. They got out. They got trans transition baskets on us on you know a few occasions in the second half and also we got to rebound the ball better I thought those two areas were areas that uh and also play ID without fouling it, I mean, we gave him a lot of free throws so those are things we're trying to concentrate on Johnny you guys have had some struggles on the road this year what is there is there anything you can do maybe to try to change things up a little bit to kind of maybe help out I mean you've had a, a better obviously record here at home Oh, absolutely. We had to keep getting better. Uh, we have to play with a little more composure on the road. We were up, you know, in the first half. And, uh, of course, they're going to make a run. They're a very good team, really good program. And uh, they were able to turn it up some more, and uh, we have to be able to meet that challenge. I thought, you know, when they when they turned it up in the second half, you know, we didn't respond to the level that we needed to, and uh, that, that gave them a lot of momentum. Uh, Cincinnati comes here next month. How do you approach that game, game differently? Uh, we have to continue to grow and get better. You know, we still have several weeks. I'm not sure the exact date. I'm only a one game at a time person, but I'm sure it's down the road somewhere. And for us, we need to make sure that we are getting better so that the next time we play, we are a more improved team. Uh, that's the whole thing in this race that we're in. You have to keep getting better, you know, because, you know, through this process, you're either getting better or you're getting worse. So we want to continue to try to improve as we move forward. You mentioned a little earlier you were down two starters. How are Shamari and CJ doing? Uh, both are getting better. Uh, both are still, you know, recovering, but uh, they're improving. Um, okay. What's the motivation of their team for the upcoming game? Uh, well, for us, you know, we're excited to, to be able to continue to play and get right back after it. Uh, you know, tough weekend, tough loss, but you know, we have to, you know, we have to regroup. And like I've said all season long, we have to respond. And so that's kind of been a nah mantra as we've gone through this, this conference play. And uh, every game is so good. Every team is really well coached and, and talented. And so you have to regroup and respond when you have setbacks. And that's how you grow. You spoke about it briefly. Ibrahim Diallo had five fouls in five minutes. How are you coaching him in that moment? What's going on and what, what happened? Just your thoughts. Uh, he picked up some tough fouls. Uh, you know, he fouled out really quick. And he's one of the players that's fouled out the fastest I've ever coached. Five minutes, five fouls. Uh, but, you know, you grow from those things. This is what I mean about improvement. You have to look at those situations. What what could I have done better? How did I put myself at risk for that? And then you make the improvements. And so in his case, uh, he's a mature player. He understands, you know, what he needs to do to, to not put himself in that position and to understand his value of our, for our team. You know, we can't have him over there sitting next to us. We don't need any more coaches. You know, we need guys out there competing and playing. And so uh, I think it was a, a big lesson for him and our team because, uh, you know, we missed him out there on the floor. Darius Johnson's kind of had some up and down games. What did you see about his performance in that game? And where does he need, where does he need to improve to be more consistent? Well, he just needs to continue to assert himself. Uh, you know, he's gone through some things with, you know, in the family with the death of his grandfather. And I think that that was kind of tough as he's bouncing back from that uh, emotionally. And uh, everybody grieves differently. And so as he's going through this, I think it's just, you know, coming coming out of that is a big part of it. And also just understanding as other guys are starting to emerge on our team, you know, you have to still maintain who you were. You know, he's been one of our leading scorers uh, throughout the season. So as other guys start to emerge, whether it's, you know, Chi Chi, whether it's Antoine, as guys are getting more opportunity to play and, and our rotations and the chemistry is starting to change, you know, you still do what you've always done because you wanted the keys that we play off of. And so you, you stay, you know, consistent with who you've been. Got a big game coming up against Baylor. Just what do you know about the, uh, the Bears? Uh, you know, really well-coached basketball team, uh, talented, talented players, you know, on that roster as well. And, uh, you know, it would be a challenge for us, as, as they all have been in this conference. You know, we have to prepare, understanding that, you know, we have to do, you know, play a 40-minute game to have any kind of success. Jalen Sellers got off to a really, really hot, hot start. And during the second half, it seemed that he left the game with some back issues. Is there any update on him and what's going on with his back? 
Uh, you know, he's doing well. I mean, you know, he was, you know, struggling a little bit during the game, but, you know, a day off and, and then continuing to get treatment. And, you know, it's, everybody's going through something this time of year. I mean, we're almost in February. Can you believe that? So uh, everybody's going through things, but he does a great job of taking care of his body, understanding how important rest is and getting treatment. Um, Baylor's ranked first in points scored per game in the Big 12. How do you guys slow that down? Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm sure a lot of teams have been trying to figure that out. Uh, I think what we need to do is we need to concentrate on what we do well, and and that's defend, and that's you know trying to make it a half court game where you know we can kind of lock in defensively and and play you do UCF defense. I mean it's uh it's always going to be a challenge no matter what because like I said they're, they're well coached, they have terrific talent, and uh, so we have to just be focused when we go out there defensively. Johnny, you got back to back games against home games against you know ranked teams. How crucial is this week of play for you guys when you look at the big picture of the Big 12? Well, it's important for us. You know, we're at home. I mean, you want to defend your home court. And that's that's very, very important. And our guys, they understand the magnitude of that. It's very important that, you know, we, we defend, you know, our home. This is Orlando, UCF. This is where we are. And, and we want to make sure we go out there with a winning effort every single time and try to defend our home. I'm sure other teams are doing the same thing in this conference. What I've been able to see, it's been tough for everybody to get out in the road and get wins, you know, and, and it's tough to get them at home. So we got, you have to earn every win that you get in this conference. Uh, and we realize that and, and we have to approach it that way. Um, what do you think will be the key to win against Baylor, not only on the game, but also mentally for the players? Uh, we have to make sure we execute both defensively and offensively. We have to stay engaged for 40 minutes. You know, the game isn't played in 20 minutes. The game isn't played in a half. These are lessons that we're learning as we go through this process, you know, with this group. And uh, it's going to take 40 minutes. It's going to take a great effort. You got a chance to earn your 300th win as a head coach at home. What would it mean to you to get the win here in Orlando? Uh, you know what? It'd be great to get this win here in Orlando, and it'd be great to get the win. Uh, you know, but you know, of course, home and and what this community has meant to us and my family, and uh, you know, I'm very grateful, like I said, for the opportunities that I've had here, and uh, getting a chance to coach the young men and playing and, and coaching for this university. I know Tyler Hendricks was battling an injury and, and missed a stretch of games. I think it might, might have been his first Big 12 game. He got some minutes in the other night at Cincinnati. Just, just what is his progress like, and what do you hope to get from him going forward? Well, we know he's a young man that can continue to help us as he as he starts to round into shape. And he was out for an extended period of time. He's back. He's healthy. And I think so you saw him out there. I, I just really like his activity uh, defensively. He makes plays. He's a good rebounder for us. And offensively, you know, he has a good feel for the game as well. So uh, having him back has been good. And he just needs to continue to, to get out there and get more comfortable. But he's a young person that we think can continue to grow and help us in our program. Last game. Jalen and Chi Chi got off some very hot starts. And in the second half, it seems like they cooled down. Do you think because of the lack of guys that you had, including Diallo, Walker, and Allen, that they keyed in on them more, which took them away from the game? Well, you know, you know me. I'm not an excuse maker, and we're not an excuse making program. Uh, you still have to find ways to be successful. And, uh, and I think we were trying to do that. Uh, of course, you know, missing a few guys out on the floor never helps you when they're your starters. But, you know, we still could have done a better job of executing. You know, I think we could have done a better job of, of finding those guys in better situations to, be, to help our team to be successful offensively. And that's where we have to grow at. And so, yeah, absolutely. We'd love to have those guys, you know, in our rotation and, and our starters. But, you know, you still got to find a way to win. Like I said, I think every team is going through something, whether it's player issues from the standpoint of injuries or things going on there or just, you know, rotational issues that you're going through. And players, you know, some weeks they're up, some weeks they're down, they're human beings. And so, uh, you know, we have to make sure that our guys understand how we have to play to be successful. Second half, like you said, Jalen, as well as, you know, Chi Chi, you know, was, we're in positions or we could have put them in better positions to help our team. C.J. Walker, um, I'm pretty sure he played the entire West Virginia game. I know he's, it was said during the broadcast he didn't practice in the days leading up to Cincinnati. I mean, is he going to be okay? It's just, just something. Just, I mean, he's had the injury early in the season. Is just kind of like a minor setback from that? Yeah, we think he's going to be okay. Uh, it's day to day right now with where he is, but but he's making progress, and you know, hopefully, you know, it's, it's something that'll be short lived. You know, really for him, like he's been three years. I watched him. 
you know, battle injuries. That's, that's tough. I hate to see that for any player. I think I've mentioned that before. It's the worst thing uh, for these young people who, who put this type of kind of work in on their game, want to go out and perform for our community, for, for UCF. To not be able to do that is hard. So I'm just hoping for him and, of course, for us selfishly because, of course, he makes us better when he's out there. Johnny, you look, you've talked a little bit about the Big 12 and how tough a conference it is. You know, I mean, what have, what have you seen so far? And week in and week out, the, the top teams seem to maybe stumble here or there at times by other teams. What, what have you seen from the Big 12 and what's impressed you about it so far? Uh, it, I'd heard, you know, just about, you know, how great a conference it's, it's been and just the parity, you know, every single night that you go out there, you know, you play an opponent, there, there can never be a night off. And, and it's been true for us for the seven games that we've played thus far. That's how it's felt. You know, every single game, I think I've mentioned it before, it's felt like an NCAA tournament game. You know, I've been, you know, into so many tournaments as a player and as a coach in my career. And, and, uh, and it does feel that way because every atmosphere is, like, is electric like that. You know, every opponent is, like I said, and I think I've mentioned it already here, every opponent's well coached. You know, every team has a lot of talent. So, therefore, uh, you know, every possession becomes so important. Um, previously speaking before, when you talk about the loss to Cincinnati, you were speaking about the defense, how you didn't execute defensively. Well, on the stat sheet, it looks like the offense didn't perform. But would you say that's more of like the standard that if you know you can perform at a level successfully at defense, that no matter how your offense plays, you'll be able to come out with the win? Well, I'm not saying you can always come out a win no matter how your offense performs, but you give yourself a chance. The only thing that's consistent in this game is, is how you can defend. You never can control the offense because, you know, I was, you know, you know, played this game, you know, all my life. And some nights that ball just won't go in for you. I don't care what you do. And other nights, you know, you just can't miss no matter what you do. And so it's an interesting game in that regard. And so we always try to tell our guys the one thing you can, you can only control what you can control. And the thing that you can control in this game is how you defend the game plan and how you defend the two things that you can control. And then you have to let it, you know, play out the way it's going to play out. You've gotten out to slow starts most of the season. Uh, the last two games, you both got out to hot starts. What changed this uh, past week in terms of offense? Well, well I think our guys are, are recognizing what we have to do, you know, to get off to better starts. And uh, part of that is just making sure we come down and just really execute whatever we're doing, you know, whether it's something offensive we were running or whether we're out in transition, understanding the importance of getting what we want and not just settling. And uh, I think our guys are doing a better job of understanding. Let's search out Let's search out a great opportunity, a great look before we settle. And then not having our, you know, our offense hurt our defense from the standpoint of turning the ball over and giving teams momentum, getting out and getting early, easy baskets is something that we're trying to uh, prevent. Okay. Keep doing All right, guys. Good. All right, guys. All right, take care. All right, Darius, uh, it was kind of a tale of two halves in that Cincinnati game. Just kind of what stuck out to you about that final result? You know, what maybe frustrated you in that second half? Um, you know, being up 12, going into the half on the road, you know, uh, you know, we have a lot of momentum. Everyone's a little bit jolly, but I think we took things. We had the wrong approach going into the second half. I feel like we should have had. We had an opportunity to step on the team's uh, throats in order to push the lead and extend the game. But um, obviously, we didn't there, and we let the game get away. Darius, you guys got back-to-back -back home games now with Baylor and, and Oklahoma. How important are these games for you guys in the sense of getting some momentum and also defending the home court? Um, these games are huge. You know, obviously we have uh, ranked opponents coming in, but we're just looking to go one and zero, focusing on Baylor right now. Um, a great team coming in, and we have a great opportunity to be able to prove ourselves. There is uh, last game you struggled a little bit. You couldn't find the net, and some passes just weren't going your way. What's been going on with your game, or what's going through your mind during that type of situation? Um, obviously, there's a lot going on. Uh, Coach Dawkins shared about my grandfather, so I've just been uh, dealing with that recently. But um, you know, I just have to use that as a, a positive thing and uh, help my teammates. You know, I'm, one, I'm the second leading scorer on my team, and these past few games I haven't been myself lately. So I just have to get back in the groove and continue to stay positive and keep helping my teammates win. What do you know about the Baylor Bears? Uh, they're a great team. They they like to shoot the three, shoot the three very well. Um, one of the, uh, I think they're a top defensive team in the country as well. They like to play in transition, so we have to limit the three point attempts and be able to guard our yard. Tell us a little bit about your grandfather. Obviously, you were close to him. Uh, just what was he like, and, and how important was he uh, to to you? 
Uh, my grandfather was huge to me. I would say he's one of my best friends. Um, he lived with me pretty much my whole life. My grandmother passed a month after I was born. So after that, he lived with me for 21, almost 22 years. Um, he lived to be 104, lived a great life. Um, he actually survived COVID when all of that happened. He he got COVID and survived it. So it's been tough. I haven't lost anyone that close to me. So it was it was definitely something new to me. And I didn't really know how to take it. But, you know, I'm starting to get over it and realize that he lived a long, great life. So I just know he would want me to be down here doing great things on the basketball court. And was he a big sports fan growing up? Or, like, obviously he was really proud of you and what you were accomplishing in your career. Yeah, so he was he was big on baseball. You know, a lot of my uncles and my uh, my mom, she played softball and uh, baseball. So he was big on that. But he would always come out to support my games. Um, Lately this year, he wasn't able to get out to most games because he started to slow down and transition. But throughout my freshman year of high school, he was at every game that he can get a chance to come to. So that was big for him. Was he an Orioles or Nationals fan? Um, I would say he was a little bit of both. Uh, mainly, he he loved baseball, all, all the baseball games, really. But um, his biggest team was probably the Redskins when they were the Redskins. And um, obviously, you guys have another Wednesday game coming up against a ranked team. You guys are undefeated on weekday games, uh, if you didn't know. What makes this team good on weekdays? Like, is school just going so good? Uh, I would just say the environment. You know, the, the environment, the fans, the atmosphere is just is super great. You know, the way our fans come out and contribute is, is super great. You know, we don't want to let them down because, you know, they do, our, they do a great job cheering us on and, and heckling the other team. So, you know, it's, it's about the, the team and the school, really. Kind of going off on that, um, previous years students may not have like shown up as much, but this year they've been showing up a lot. What does that mean to you as a player? Uh, it means a lot. You know, we don't want to disappoint them. We don't want to disappoint our coaches and our fans. So going into the game, knowing that they're cheering for us and rooting for us, we don't want to let them down. When you when you look at this performance, uh, you know, uh, coming off the, the loss to Cincinnati, what is it something you guys need to do on the road? You, you guys have struggled a little bit on the road. Is it is it the new venues? Is it the the, the difficult, the uh, better league? What what's kind of maybe stood out to you? Why you guys have maybe some struggles on the road? Um, I don't really put, think that's a factor. I think um, going into the road, we always preach it's just us. Um, it's always just about the team and the guy next to you. Um, so it's some things that we have to work on offensively, um, work on our spacing and stuff like that that we're lacking right now. But. Our defensive always is great. We rely on our defense. That's something that can always travel. But offensively, you can't control whether the ball's going to go in the hoop every night. So we just have to focus on defense. Control what you can control. Um, what's your motivation for the upcoming game? Um, we want to get back in the win column. Um, you know, preaching to the team that we can't keep going. One win, one loss. We want to start stacking days and stacking wins to be able to succeed and be able to get to the top of the conference and be able to have a postseason. I mean, late in the game, you guys struggled to score mightily. Um, not, no field goals were going in. How much of a loss was it to not have Shamari Allen, a guy who energizes the team late in the half and makes big time plays? Uh, it was definitely a huge loss, but um, you know, next man up, Shamari is a great aspect for our team, a great defender and someone who's great getting downhill and finishing at the rim and, and be able to draw fouls. Um, so it was definitely a missing piece there. Um, Shamari also helps me out being off the ball a little bit more, so that was definitely something that we lacked. But I feel like we had multiple opportunities and chances to still win the game. It's a big homestand coming up. Obviously, Baylor on Wednesday, Oklahoma on Saturday, both nationally ranked teams. I guess for you guys to kind of get back on track and maybe start to you know, get into that Big 12 contingent, how important is it to, to post wins this week, especially since they're home games? Uh, these wins are, are greatly important. Uh, you know, after the other, we have to go on the road. But, you know, we're trying to stay focused on going 1-0, and know, taking one step at a time, one game at a time. Um, I feel like we have a great opportunity here on Wednesday. And then once we do what we're supposed to do, we have a great opportunity on Saturday. Um, what's your favorite play? Oh, sorry. What's your favorite thing about playing at home? Uh, definitely the atmosphere. Um, get a chance for any family, friends to be able to come out and watch you play and compete at one of the highest levels, with well, the highest level in college basketball, really. Um, you know, the fan the fan base is great. You know, get to see your students sometimes walk into class, get to congratulate you, good game, yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's my biggest thing. From a standpoint of the season right now, what do you feel like has been the team's biggest strength and biggest weakness? Uh, I feel like our biggest strength has been our defense. Um, considering the fact that we're top 10 uh, defensively, and I feel like we sh we can be number one. Uh, we just have to really lock in and focus on the little details. But uh, really offensively, you know, we have a bunch of new guys, new guys coming into new roles, playing more minutes. So we're just trying to get our chemistry and continuity together. 
And speaking on defense, that's obviously the team's identity. Coach preaches that every press conference. Do you guys have like a sort of mindset that if you can hold a team down to under a certain amount, that you will get the win even if you struggle offensively? Uh, yeah, uh, definitely that. Um, if we hold a team under 50, it's, we call it a defensive masterpiece. Um, and we try to limit ourselves to having – uh, more than 10 turnovers. Uh, our coach always tells us if you have 10 turnovers, the less you'll be in any basketball game. Paul Sachs? Yeah. Yeah, well, what's your, your grandfather's name? Uh, Henry. Thank you. Appreciate well. John? Nah, Cheney. Henry. Henry Cheney, yeah. Okay. Did he go to the Florida game last year? Yeah, he was at the Florida game I, last year. I think I he, came, he came to one game this year. I can't remember exactly which game it was, but he came to one game this year. Okay. Yeah. I think I remember seeing him like, at that game. Yeah, he was, he was, he's at the game, yeah. All right, Jalen, it's kind of a tale of two halves in that Cincinnati game. Really hot start, had a big lead at halftime, then things kind of unraveled there in the second half. What was your, your takeaway from that game, and, and what needs to improve to you know not allow that to happen? Um, I feel like just putting two halves together. Um, that's something that we have been struggling with. Um, we haven't been relentless enough to put two halves together, I don't think. So the moment that we get to turn that corner up and two halves together, I think we'll be fine. Jalen, late in the second half, or middle of the second half, you left with a back injury, it looked like. How, have you been struggling with your back as of late? What's going um, on with that? Yeah, I, I've been struggling with it since probably the Kansas game. I messed it up the Kansas game, so I've been struggling with it ever since. But it's better um, just getting treatment on it each and every day and just making sure that I'm healthy for the rest of the season. Um, how are you mentally preparing to play four ranked teams coming up? Um, the same way I prepare for any other team. Um, just making sure that um, we listen to Coach Dogs on um, watching, watching film and um, making sure that we know know the team weaknesses, knowing their scrims, and just being able to attack their weaknesses and things like that to get the win. What are the strengths you've seen of uh, Baylor? Um, I would say they're a good three-point shooting team. Um, they get out in transition. And they also got they got some guys um, on their team that are really good. So you know, we just got to cut that water off. Jalen, how important – or the, the next two games are at home against Baylor and Oklahoma ranked teams. How important is this stretch for you guys to maybe make a statement to get back on track in the Big 12? Um, it's very important to come out and um, win these two games, um, focusing on Baylor right now. But, yeah, it's most definitely a good stretch for us to take care of um, the home place. So. Um, how do you handle the pressure and the expectations where it comes to you, especially since you are one of the top scorers of the team? Um, just taking the approach at um, the win a day, every day. Um, just treat my 24 hours like like it's my last each and every day and just listening to my leaders like um, Darius and Shamar, just seeing why I can get better with and things of that sort. Um, in the in the Cincinnati game, you got off to a really hot start. It looked like you couldn't miss a basket. And then in the second half, things slowed down mightily for the whole team. What happened offensively in that second half? Um, I feel like we got um, a little stagnant, um, try to go a little too much one-on-one. Um, and not moving the ball as much. I think that was our biggest mistake that we made in that game. Not having you know Shamari in that game. Obviously, he's a team captain. You've talked about what a great leader he is. How's he been? Just kind of you know dealing with everything. And is he is he trying to coach you guys up, even though he couldn't play the other night? Um, yeah, Shamari, Shamari. He most definitely try to coach us up um, and give me. Also, when we come to the sideline, just try to give us tips on just how to win the game and close out the game, and just trying to keep us locked in and focused. A big thing that. Uh, in the Cincinnati game was obviously Ibrahim uh, fouling out. What kind of impact does he bring to the team when he's on the court? Um, he brings a big impact. Um, and he got to understand um, um, how important he is to the team when it comes to fouling. I feel like two of his fouls, two of his fouls were most definitely like um, he shouldn't have gotten them fouls. Like he should have been better, smarter. But as well as um, us guarding the ball, we got to make sure we don't put him in them positions as well. So it's on all of us. Um, Baylor is ranked first in points scored per game in the Big 12. How do you plan to slow that down? Um, just playing our, playing our brand of defense, um, just making sure that we guard our yard and just taking every every possession like it's our last, just treating everyone like it's our last. That's what Coach Dawkins has been preaching every day in practice, treating every possession like it's our last possession. All set? Thanks, guys. Appreciate, Appreciate y'all.